Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is highly requested because I get this question all of the time. What advice do you give to someone who's a first sergeant, who's a flight sergeant, who's a flight commander? I have several videos and a whole playlist on encampment, so I'll like link it above and in the description below so you can watch all of the videos. And I have some other parts where I've talked specifically on the roles of a flight sergeant, first sergeant, etc. and some things like that. So I'll leave those below as long along with some of the actual like regulations that can help you out. This is my experience. So I've staffed nine encampments from flight sergeant to encampment cadet commander. So I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of this. I think a lot of this is not really the roles and aspects of like, you need to be the one who wakes up the cadets in the barracks by turning the lights and banging in the lockers. Um, that's up to your encampment. That's for them to decide. That's for your chain of command to carry out to you. Um, I really want to give you the ideology and the leadership behind being a flight sergeant, first sergeant, flight commander. And if you're not in one of those roles, that's really what I'm talking about is flight sergeant, first sergeant, flight commander. If you're in the executive level, um, squadron parent up, if you want to see a video on that, I have it's different because it's the strategic versus the hands-on so if you want to see a video on that leave like a comment below I should go and do that so I can actually see how many people want that um and maybe I'll do one on that or if you're on support staff or something like that leave it in the comments below exactly what you want me to talk about or if you have questions something like that and I can give you feedback okay now we can really start the first thing is you get assigned when you get the list of like oh yay I'm gonna be a first sergeant you need to go become BFFs with that squadron commander and BFFs with those uh, flight sergeants. If you're a flight sergeant, flight sergeant, flight commander, especially, that relationship between the two of you is so vital. Now, most of the time, a flight commander is going to have some sort of prior experience and they really can mentor you um, and just really get on that same page. Um, I think having several phone calls especially in the weeks leading up to it, just sit, talking. Talk through your CAP experience, talk through the drama that's going on your wing, become friends. Um, that's the person who you're going to spend all of your time with for an entire week. Um, talk. What's your family's like? What's your ideology? What are your goals in life? Talk really about what do you think about leadership? What are some things you want to see these kids achieve? Talk about the encampment, talk about past Just talk and talk and talk. Ask them for advice. And the thing is, like, I think I was scared of I was scared of messing up and I think that it's so easy to think that there's a key, like there's a right way to do it and there's not. And I think that's why it's important to learn these ideologies behind it because so much of it is your mindset of when you get in a hard situation, you're not looking for the right answer. You're looking for what do I do that's going to benefit my cadets the most. So I think you need to go and be with your flight commander so when you have issues or you have a thought or you want to do something or you want to change something, you want to add a Jody, you can be like, hey, can I do this? And throughout the week, you'll kind of get un the understanding of how each other works. And so it works a lot better if you have that basis of understanding and that mutual respect so that you can just literally bounce things off each other. Um, with like the people I trust, the people who I know who they work, now like communication, it literally goes, hey, I did this. And you have what's called like backfilling of information because I trust them, they trust me. So it's we work in a partnership and it's not that hierarchy anymore of I'm the flight commander, I'm in charge, you're the flight sergeant, you're doing this. It's a partnership and I think that's so important and it's so vital to the success. No question is too dumb, just talk. You can never over communicate. Um, I had a question asked too is if I could wear yoga pants during PT and this is something I was kind of like stressing out over. It's like my first time, uh, yeah, as a flight sergeant and I was like, who do I ask? Like, what do I do? Is that acceptable? I was like, it's winter in camp, it's gonna be cold, I don't know. And I was like overthinking this. And honestly, if you just have that relationship where you've been texting back and forth, then asking, hey, yoga pants is okay, like that's not, not even appropriate, right? And they're like, yeah, hell yeah, wear yoga pants. Like, that's where you wanna be because you have that trust and understanding and no question is too dumb. Seriously, it's not. Because if you have that question, that means you're unsure about something. And so a lot of the time, like if you have that question, then that means like with PT, I was probably asking that question because I didn't have a full understanding of what PT looks like. Of I don't, not understanding that the safety behind winter encampment is it doesn't matter what you're wearing as long as you're warm. So I think it goes back to that. Know your purpose. This is the most important thing. If you don't get anything out of this video out of any leadership about anyone talking about encampment ever, know that the purpose of you being on line staff is to train the basics. That's it to train the basics. And I think it's so important that we go in with exactly our mindset because it's not to win warrior flights, it's not to win our flights, it's not to be a great flight sergeant, it's not to do this, it's not to go home and know that you impacted them. It's for them to be trained. And that's not going in there as 
a drill sergeant, it's to train basics. Now, whatever that means. I mean, when you have a kid who pees their pants, that means going, I'm not your flight sergeant right now. I'm gonna act like nothing happened. I'm gonna walk you back to the barracks. I'm gonna get you new pants. I wanna put your pants in the washer. And that's what it means. That's training your basics. That's showing them that you care. When you have someone who won't eat, that's when you sit by them and say, hey, what would you like to eat? Can we eat some cereal? Can we eat some granola bars? What can we do eat to eat? And while they're crying and they're not eating because they're so stressed out, you can sit there and go, turn that switch off and be like, I'm not going to yell at you. Everything's going to be okay. It's the emotional side, the physical side, the mental side. It's not about warrior or honor, it's to train the basics. And so now even sometimes I've literally written on my hand to train the basics or at one time I put them just so that I would remember that I'm there for them. Whatever you do, whatever you need to memorize in any situation, in teaching drill, I'm here to teach the basics drill. In each meal, I'm here to teach the basics. Whether that's leadership by example, whether that's anything you do, ask, is my purpose in doing this to train them? If I'm yelling at them, what is my purpose in yelling at them right now? Is it going to train them? I'm not saying don't yell because you need to yell at some times, but in your yelling, are you motivating or are you scaring? Are you encouraging or are you degrading? Think about it. Keep going back to it. Every night go, how did I train the basics? How can I train them better? That's what it's all about. You are last in everything. And I think this kind of goes back to the last one because if you were there to train your basics, then nothing's about you. Your purpose is not, there's no, you're not a basic. Your purpose is not to train you. So I remember being in the barracks and the cadets were working in uniforms and stuff. And I would go sit on my bed and kind of be like, this is my chill time. And I justify it as like, they are helping each other. This is when they're learning how to work with each other. This is the time that, that they're fixing their bunks. Like, I don't need to be there for that. And in reality, I don't get that right to sit down. In being their flight sergeant, first sergeant, flight commander, I need to be there at every single moment. And if they're standing up doing uniforms and stuff, then I need to be doing that. Whether that's on my own bed, or if that's following every single cat around and questioning, is that 45 degrees? Is that 90 inches? Or is that 90 degrees? Is that 12 inches? Asking them that because you don't get the time to sit down. That's for when they're in classes and they're not your responsibility for that temporary moment. Every other time, that's for you to work on them. You're the last one to go to sleep. You're the last one to sit down. You're the last one to eat. You're the last one to do anything. You are last. They are first because you decided to train them. You're the last to sleep, last to sit, last to speak. Create an environment that is fun. Create a team. And I think this is so important because it's not... It's not me, the flight staff, you, the basics. It's a, we're a team. And so you go in there with being like, my team is the best. I'm gonna support them so well. I am gonna be so proud of them. I think my cadets are the best at everything and create that environment where you're having fun, building them up and encouraging them. That's how you get them to go far. Because when you believe in them, they're gonna go a lot farther than with them believing in themselves. They look up to you so much that I don't think, I mean, think of someone you look up to and that's how they look up to you. So if you believe in them, that's everything to them. That's all you gotta do. Make a, an environment that treats them like you're a team. Don't create a hierarchy of I'm the flight staff, you're the basics. Create an environment of we are the team. We are Alpha Flight, we are Bravo Flight and say we. Sit down with them on the ground. Help them when they're studying their SOIs, help them. If one thing I like when doing SOIs is have, have, ask them the question, who is the encampment commander? Ask them as a team. Have them answer in unison. The point of getting them on step and things like that is to treat them like a team like that they are. So treat them like that. And I think that goes a long way. And my last and final one is it's 50% you, 50% them. So if you have a really crappy flight, you can win on a flight. If you have a really crappy flight staff and a really great cadets, you can win on our flight. So it's you coming together in this unison that gets it done. That gets it done. It's not a, oh, I have a really crappy flight. We're not going to go anywhere. And it's the basics can't go. I have really crappy flight stuff or I have a really crappy flight commander and I'm the flight sergeant. We're not going to win. It's, it's a partnership to get it done. 
because they can't go anywhere without your support and you can't go anywhere that, without their effort. So I just shoved a lot of ideology and quick leadership at you. Um, if you have any questions on this or you want to see more or anything like that, check the description, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about your experience as a flight sergeant, first sergeant, flight commander. Um, leave stuff in the comments below. I love reading it and responding and it's so much fun. Anyways, I will see you in my next video. And remember, if you want to see one on support staff or executive staff, let me know in the comments below. Thanks, guys. Bye.